Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a closing market wrap for the week ending Friday, December 28th, 2018. Uh, for those of you who are not members of the site, or if you are a member of rightsideofthechart.com and you haven't caught it, uh, just returned to my desk from a short vacation this week. Uh, so I am uh, back back in the office, and, and I'll be uh, I'll continue to catch up on any comments, uh, chart requests, um, questions, anything uh, over the weekend. Um, just getting settled in, only been back a couple hours. So I uh, did put out a video earlier today for members on the site, as well as some, some near-term targets and scenarios for the uh, markets, QQQ and SPY, so you may want to check that out. Um, uh, in this video, we'll make this public content. I'll just do an uh, overall um, uh, update on the broad markets here. And there are a couple other things I do want to cover that I did not cover in today's video, uh, if you happen to catch that one. I want to cover the charts of the top uh, five FANG stocks, Microsoft, Apple, Alphabet, Amazon, Facebook. Take a quick look at those and then uh, maybe touch on the 60-minute charts of QQQ and SPY. All right, so starting out here uh, with the, really, I guess where I left off um, earlier in the week, we had on Monday, or on, uh, last Friday, a what appears to be by most accounts, at least it, it appears that way now, and time will tell if it sticks, this appears to be a selling climax. Uh, again, talked about on Friday, what I'm referring to is the uh, unusually large volume spike, a uh, very large down day on Friday, and uh, we had uh, similar selling climaxes back here with that. That candle here here and they all mark near-term bottom so uh, you know nothing has changed my longer term outlook nor my shorter term outlook I'm still looking for a, a bear market rally a decent rally that will uh, most likely carry us well into January um, could you know we could be talking anywhere uh, my guesstimation anywhere from probably two three weeks minimum um, and possibly five six weeks or more on the uh, upside but uh, i'll try to as, as this thing goes on as long as we get some 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 follow through next week which i do suspect that we will uh that'll help firm up the case that at least a near-term tradable bottom has been put in and then uh, uh maybe we'll brush on some targets here again i covered that earlier in today's video these are a couple of near-term levels but let's just why we're on the qqq daily chart let's stay there uh so you know 153.75 and that's uh we were above it um you know when i uh, was covering the recent video and we closed right about on there 152.97 so we'll call that 153 and that is resistance you can see we had the reaction back here from uh, uh, April and a couple uh, although that wasn't the low back on early February we did have a candlestick there and we closed back above it so we had that beef a uh, brief punch down through there um, but uh, again, uh, kind of let's just talk on the price action the last few days. So uh, everything that was covered before, we were extremely oversold. We had uh, positive divergence here. We burned through divergence on the PPO, but we still very much had it intact on the RSI on all the major indexes, the S&P 500, Russell 2000, small caps, mid caps, and all that good stuff. So uh, so there it is. So a lot of evidence, you know, the market was down at least QQQ from high to low, you know, over 20 something percent, about 23 percent or so. And then, um, as we know, this is when I was out uh, on, uh, on vacation the last couple of days, we had that big, big reversal on Wednesday and then follow through yesterday and again today was uh you know we closed what virtually flat uh depending on what monitor i'm looking at one showing a close of 0.5 doesn't matter whether it's 0 0.5 down 0 0.5 up or zero uh essentially a flat day today on qqq uh which shows me as i said in the earlier video that this appears now to be and, and again it's early to much too early to say that with strong conviction but it appears to be that the market has flipped from one of distribution to a market of accumula under accumulation uh, obviously the last couple of days were strong, strong accumulation days and the fact that uh, we, we held those gains today uh, well you call it a wash call it for what you want but uh, so far we pretty much ran into resistance here and I also was in the earlier videos I showed you some Fibonacci retracement levels we pretty much failed uh, QQQ on the 38.2 percent Fibonacci retracement of this move down from this high this reaction high that previous recent reaction high there down to the lows you have the 38.2 fib here and then you have a cluster right here I, I measured my fibs from the recent highs right here we had virtual roughly a double top high in QQQ down to the lows you can see there's a 38.2 fib and uh, we have the uh, 50 
and 61.8. So really a FIB cluster up here. And this is really what I'm eyeing near term. I think we can probably go up a little more than that. In fact, I, I think we might be able to make a run at the 200 day uh, if we can get some follow through next week. So today's Friday. And as I said, we'll wait and see. I'll, I'll, I'll be able to dive a little deeper into the charts. Uh, often I take working vacations where I'm in front of the computer and I post updates uh, as I was park hopping in you know, Orlando with the family. Long 12 plus hour days, actually easily 12 hours and then some. Uh, didn't have any time except to maybe check the cell phone a couple times throughout the day. And as such, I'll, I'll pour through the charts over the weekend. And, and uh, if anything else stands out, I'll post an update before we open on Monday. So there's QQQ again, Fibonacci retracements and uh, some price levels. Uh, and I'll, I'll, I'll sharpen up some targets uh, soon here. And let's look at SPY. Uh, SPY, again, same story. Uh, you can see the uh, what appears to be a selling climax leading into the lows there. Uh, just like we had a selling climax back here and a little one there. Uh, and this one really, this could stick. This could have more lasting implications again. And there's, I think, plenty of upside if SPY wants to run. Uh, you have a pretty big key Fibonacci cluster right here. Again, I use the same Fib points, or at least uh, uh, measured off the highs in SPY down to the recent lows. That's the yellow line here. And you can see the Fibonacci levels to the left. Uh, so I have the 50 uh, percent Fibonacci retracement of the entire move coming in right around the 61.8 from measured from this move down uh, on that last reaction high and spy before we took that sharp plunge down and so you have a Fibonacci cluster and that what I like about that it also comes in with some pretty decent uh, uh, price resistance this was a key support level here which broke uh, so that's really what I'm looking at and I don't expect us to go straight up we had a pretty explosive move off the bottom and that's very indicative of a a bear market rally being extremely oversold. It's a mixture of short covering, uh, natural buying. Plus, again, what I've seen the last few days, we closed virtually flat on SPY. Uh, so it seems to be that the, uh, you know, I, I, you know what, what I think a lot of this had to do with was forced selling. I talked about it before, before it even happened. You know, hedge funds, pension plans, unwinding, mutual funds being uh, hit with redemptions and having to sell what they own. Uh, too much money in the FANG stocks, a lot of margin calls. Uh, we had a huge, you know, margin uh, interest at its peak recently. So I think all that factored in. And again, uh, no matter what the fundamentals are, no matter how cheap stocks get, as long as you have selling pressure, the stock market works on supply and demand. So it shows us at least as the last few days, the sh supply demand equation has shifted. And uh, we've seen a couple days of accumulation here. Okay, sorry, brief interruption there. So uh, today you can see we stopped a cold at the uh, 38.2 Fibonacci retracement. Again, that's off this most recent reaction high on SPY. There it is, 38.2. And um, we'll see what happens next week. So, you know, nothing straight up. Somewhere along the line we'll have uh, maybe a couple down days, maybe some consolidation. But uh, what I said to members uh, even last night when I got back to the hotel room, I, I said my my thoughts here. I would not try to uh, game any pullbacks. I wouldn't try to. Uh, I'm not personally looking to short any rallies into resistance. If this was a selling climax, um, and we're looking at a uh, what you know my expectation remains for at least a double digit rally. Well, we're only about halfway there, and um, I think what'll happen is uh, pullbacks will get bought up. And let's in fact let's talk about that. Um, let's look at QQQ. Uh, yesterday, uh, when I was in the park, and this is not easy to break away from your family. Of course, my wife's looking over my shoulder. The kids are dragging me to go on rides, but I did uh, manage to get a post off. Where was it? Right here. Uh, yesterday, you know, I'm still away from my desk, but I wanted to share this pullback. Seems to offer an objective long entry on QQQ, SPY, etc. with a tight stop. Uh, QQQ was trading at 148.44. So what happened? That was yesterday, again, the day after that huge rally. Uh, that we had um, and we can see as we go to the chart so we were at 148.44 right about if I can get the crosshairs there right about this area here somewhere somewhere in here yesterday and you can see we went down a little further and had a tremendous rally and uh, uh, so that was a great time to go long so from where we closed the previous day the market was down about QQQ was down about three and a half percent so we dropped from there about one percent or so 
a little less than a percent and then had an explosive move off the bottom so what this tells me is that um Again, uh, these funds, at least as of um, yesterday and um, Wednesday, we weren't under extreme selling pressure. In fact, the opposite was true. Uh, there was a lot of accumulation going on. The dip, you know, we had that initial rally, um, and then uh, they aggressively bought up the pullback today. Now, again, we were up quite a bit in the last couple of days. You can't expect uh, everything to go up together with, uh, forever without some consolidation. But from the lows up to um, even from where we're at, even where we closed today, roughly flat, that's a six percent uh, gain. So better than you know at least half of my minimum expectation. Again, I'm looking for at least a double-digit uh, bounce here. So, uh, so far so good. And again, I don't want to beat a dead horse, but the common theme seems to be one of a uh, distribution uh, accumulation at this point in time. I put up these charts on the right side of the chart earlier for members, basically showing a, a downtrend line right here uh, that we took out. It's not super well defined. There's a few reactions along the way. I mean, you can see where, where the trend line comes off. You got a couple reactions here, reaction, reaction there. We kind of took it out and back tested and closed right on it. So I think uh, come Monday, my expectation is the scenario showed come up here, have some minor resistance around 157.20, probably get a pullback there, come in and test this trend line, the uptrend line here, give it another reaction and thrust up here at about 160 20 so that's just some near-term targets and I had a I posted a similar chart on spy showing a comparable downtrend line here on the 60 minute chart you can see it there you could play around with where it comes in so on spy you can either say we close just below it if you draw it like that or we broke above it and back tested maybe a little uh, bull flagging action right here because uh, when you uh, pull flag consists of let's look at that on a five minute chart or maybe uh let's do a yeah, we can see it on the 15. Let me just zoom in a little bit. So you see this impulsive move up right here. Uh, this could be your flagpole. Uh, you have an impulsive rally and then some consolidation right here. Uh, that's indicative of a flagging type pattern and then break out uh, if we hold the back test of this trend line or maybe pop down here um, come up here and hit that 258 level on Monday. So those are just or sometime early next week. So those are near term targets. And since I've been away from my desk for a few days, uh, here's uh, the 60-minute charts uh, for the YouTubers uh, or those following the free content on the right side of the chart. Uh, I shared this earlier today in the trading room as well, or on the site, I should say. And uh, there it is. We, so we have a comparable downtrend line. Remember, I was just showing you the QQQ and SPY 60-minute charts. These are the futures for your futures traders. This is NQ, the NASDAQ 100 E-minis. So you have a downtrend line which, which was taken out today and we had a pretty impulsive candle, 60-minute candle, uh, late in the session, uh, which took us right down to our back test of that trend line. Now, I did point out there are some negative divergences, what I call potential divergences. Just don't want to see these. Well, actually, they're confirmed right now. And yeah, they could play out, but I don't suspect so. Again, I put a higher weighting into the bigger picture right now, the daily chart. So if we did have a selling climax recently, uh, and again, maybe I'll be wrong, but it's just me. I don't want to try to get cute here and short pullbacks if we just put in a major bottom, um, at least, you know, tradable bottom, because what will happen if that is the case, uh, pullbacks will be bought up and possibly bought up aggressively as they were yesterday. So whether we come back in here, I'd put it, you know, six to one, half dozen to the other or 50 50 odds, I should say, uh, whether we come in and, and move on up from here. Uh, where we close today or come down, maybe test that trend line once more. My, my preferred scenario has us gapping up Monday, come in hitting resistance, uh, which is not far overhead. And I just showed you that on QQQ. Then coming back down, maybe have another reaction on this trend line to validate it and then thrust up. And maybe these divergences play out, but maybe the lines have to be extended. In other words, we, we come up here and, and uh, uh, we put in a divergent high somewhere up here and then, then we... Uh, take those out but for now keep an eye we do have these uh, uptrend lines potential uptrend lines forming on qqq spy nq and let me show you es okay this is a 60 minute chart of es the s p 500 e mini futures you can see there's that uh, 
uptrend line uh, there's a divergence line which again remember divergences can be extended and I also put a higher weighting right now on what's happened recently on the daily charts the extreme oversold conditions the fact that we had a you know forced liquidations a lot of you know forced selling uh, panic sell-off and all that kind of stuff that that could have some near-term bullish implications so therefore even if we do break down below this it may prove to be a, a, a whipsaw signal and we could rally back up um, but as of now I just again I think the risk reward which I've been saying for you know I guess a week now I don't think it's it's favorable to the short side I think it's skewed to the long side um, so we'll know next week uh, if we can follow through and, and have another green close it just helps reinforce that that force selling right now at least for the time being is over with it means that there aren't funds that are, are getting hit with redemptions that have to sell um, that there are you know that the margin calls have stopped at least for the near term and and I think as always and I believe I said it in the other video today as always during a correction or a rally in the markets the pendulum always swings too far in one direction so if you look at the bigger picture with the rally that we had here again my longer term outlook has not changed and that is still bearish but if you look at the um, you know what's happened in the near term you know a drop in the S&P 500 from high to low in just a few months uh, of you know 20 percent I think that's done a pretty good job of pricing in for the foreseeable future in other words making an adjustment to the earnings of the P ratios evaluation of companies uh, so even if this is just uh, the first leg down in a bear market nothing goes straight down so um, uh, maybe we kick back up here and there's plenty of uh, plenty of room to rally back up before we get to the 200 day EMA I think we'll probably come through the 50 on this bounce up is my guess again if we get some traction here and the 200 is up there quite a way so plenty of, I think plenty of upside and trying to call the zigs and the zags can be tough and, and I'll probably focus more on the daily charts right now for the very near term and not put such a heavy weighting on the 15 60 minute charts because if you do that and if I'm right you're going to see these divergences and just like dip buyers in a bull market want to keep buying every dip until you know took them a while to get to learn that lesson on this one that dip buying doesn't work forever I think you'll see the same thing I think you'll see people who weren't bears at the top but started to become bears here recently want to short every rip and that strategy I suspect may not work if I'm proven wrong next week so be it um, but uh, as of now let's just say again near-term targets right about here come up here maybe 258.80 on SPY and then QQQ again just near term stuff 160.20 and maybe some consolidation because if we get there pretty quick if we get there on Monday or Tuesday um, that would be from where we close today another 5% if we get there without a lot of consolidation or, or uh, you know pretty sharp pullback before then we will be very overbought in the near term and so then uh, I would be looking for something like this you know maybe get up there early next week and then maybe have a decent pullback or some sideways consolidation to work off the uh, near term overbought conditions and then maybe uh, maybe resume a uptrend from there okay to wrap this video up again I think I've pointed out the, uh, the the potential selling climax the bullish divergences that remained intact which also speak to you know just how far and long this rally could last um, and uh, let's look at a few other things and we'll wrap it up I said I wanted to go over the market leading fang stocks and uh, this was you know things that are I was looking at last week um, the fact that all these leading stocks and these have been the market these were the market leaders they're still the top heavy weighted components in both the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq 100 and as you can see they started this whole thing there was a lot of selling pressure on the fang stocks but recently uh, we've had a pretty nice lift in Microsoft and again if uh, back out what you think is going to happen in the market um, whether you think we're in a bear market that's you know markets about to collapse when I look at this chart I see Microsoft with pretty nice divergence here you can see RSI divergence yes it did burn through the divergence on the PPO but it also held support it overshot support this was a very well-defined support level around $97 and um, we had what I refer to at least it's a term I use momentum fueled overshoot and we had that meltdown into the you know Christmas Eve and um, 
that uh, overshot that $97 support, but we took it back. So that's bullish that we regained that level. We are testing the 200 day that Microsoft did come back to the 200 day. So as I said, there's going to be work. There's work to be done uh, on the market here. It's not uh, smooth sailing from here. Don't get me wrong. I just think that the uh, bias for the next uh, few weeks, if I had to be either long or short for the next four weeks, uh, and, you know, I don't have to be anything. If I was uncertain, I'd be in cash. But as I mentioned, I've been moving into 401ks, long-term funds, scaling in over the last week or so, and uh, just added my uh, what's probably going to be my final lot today. Um, here's Apple. Nice downtrend line to watch. Apple was coming up. Apple didn't have very well-defined support, but it did have a support zone. These three lines here, you can see there's a lot of reactions and gaps all in between there. Uh, and so we really stressed the lower limits and overshot just by a hair momentum fueled overshoot again it was really just that uh was that christmas eve right the um yeah the 24th the partial trading day and so that to me i think was just the final capitulation for the near term and then that big green candle there and so if we take out this downtrend line all the better for apple uh, a couple more to look at uh, and actually let's also look at weekly charts while we're here on each one apple there's support on the weekly uh, i already i jumped out off microsoft real quick but there it is microsoft look at that nice weekly uh candlestick we dip below you can see that's a well-defined support right there about 97.50 we undercut it uh on new year's eve or christmas eve and so far we uh managed to close the week well so week is over so we closed that back above there so there's a stick save now there's that 40 week moving average which is the same as a 200 day certainly um could come in but look you back here some stocks do a better job of uh, or a certain moving average will do a better job on some stocks and others not others so you can see microsoft didn't even touch that level all throughout this rally and over here it sliced through it quite a bit as if it wasn't there so on microsoft i don't put as heavy a weighting on the 40 week moving average the 200 days so let's not even worry a little too much about that Should, certainly could come into play uh, let's get back to the other ones I was looking at and we will wrap this video up. So I covered Microsoft, Apple. We're going to look at Alphabet. Here's G-O-O-G or G-O-O-G-L class A shares. You can see this is a weekly chart at support. Again, make no mistake about it. This is a long term uptrend line. It's broken. There's that 40 week moving average broken. So, uh, you know, if you ask me where this one will be in three, two, three weeks, I think higher. If you ask me where it'll be in uh, two or three months, especially six months, eight months from now, I think lower. Uh, so, again, that's all I'm looking for is a little bounce here off support. And uh, we'll get to the daily chart there in a second. Let me just show you the weekly of GOG, the other share class. Again, right at the bottom of a support zone, um, quite a bit oversold. Let's just look at the daily charts on these two before we move on. Uh, daily chart, nice bullish divergence on both the PPO. And again, this is a common theme here. A lot of these market leading stocks look good. Forget about what happened, uh, what you think is going to happen. When I see positive divergence on a daily time frame on these market leading stocks after a healthy correction, that tells me, hey, maybe time to stop shorting. Last time we had bullish divergence on Alphabet, we had it only on the RSI right there, and it still led to a rally of about 31%. Uh, this time we have bullish divergence on both the uh, PPO and RSI. Uh, and there's the other share class there, GOG, same story, of course. And finally, Amazon. Uh, Amazon, before it even peaked, right when it was here, I laid out this was my third and final target at uh, 1341.56. Uh, doesn't get much better than that. If you look what happened on Christmas Eve right here, look at that doji. You can't even make it out. There is a, of course, the right on the line we parked it right on that level that day closed at 1343.96 uh close enough for government work especially on a 1300 dollars stock two points is virtually nothing and um, after undercutting it so uh, again these are all things that go into my, you know my analysis this is one of the largest components of the um, uh, of the NASDAQ 100. And you can see that it's now had a healthy correction down to a very well-defined support and bullish divergence on both the PPO and the um, RSI, uh, potential selling climax. 
and it's rallied from there. So, you know, I think this one has more upside. And again, that that makes a case that the market probably has more upside if Amazon's going up. Facebook, strong divergence. Uh, you can see very strong bullish divergence. I know nobody wants to touch Facebook with everything they've had going on. This is one of the better looking charts right now, in my opinion. And uh, you can tighten this trend line up a little bit. Let's draw it like that. So a nice falling wedge pattern. You know, like everything else, some work to be done. Let's look at it on the weekly. I don't love the long-term chart on Facebook, but again, the daily chart says that we could bounce here and um, maybe more than just a few weeks could, could rally for a couple months here, um, possibly even more. But again, we'll, we'll take it as it comes. It's hard to say right now where the market will be in three months from now. It's like I think of uh, technical analysis like uh, weather forecasting. You know, the weathermen can tell you pretty good uh, with pretty good accuracy what, what's going to happen today and tomorrow, how cold it will be, how warm, what the rain chance is. But when they start trying to guess what the weather will be like uh, or forecast, you know, seven, ten days in advance, especially two, three months in advance, at that point they can only go back to seasonality patterns and all that stuff. So. Technical analysis, eh, somewhat. I think we can do a better job by looking at the long-term chart. So I think I can tell you with a pretty good degree of confidence that 6 to 12 months from now, the market will probably be lower today than it is today. Um, but uh, we'll see. Let the charts change my mind, and uh, I'll be glad to. I'm, like I said, the... Uh, markets are dynamic and so is my analysis so let's wrap it up here and we'll just pick it up next week uh, if uh, we have some follow through to the upside next week and it only will help reinforce the case that the market may have had a, a, a put in a, a near-term bottom here and uh, if something else happens and we go down you know obviously watch those recent lows I can tell you this right now before I wrap this video up uh, this market has no business taking out uh, Wednesday's candle that was a big bullish candle that means a lot technically if for whatever reason the market takes that candle out and i'll tell you what that what we did uh, the following day on thursday with that nice you know three and a half percent dip or so was about a 50 percent retracement of the move off the bottom that should be that as well so i can tell you right now that uh, i won't ever say there's a complete line in the sand one level where you should be long one level where you should be short but i can just say this any pullbacks next week should be contained by uh, Thursday's lows. Anything much below that, then that would, would quite likely open up the door for another move down that will undercut the lows. So if you are long, if you went long anywhere, uh, anywhere recently, you might consider a stop not, some, not too far below, uh, again, Thursday's lows. Uh, we'll wrap it up here. This has been Randy Finney with the right side of the chart. Hope everybody's having a great holiday season. And um, we'll pick this up again uh, on Monday. Have a great weekend.